There's energy everywhere. But sometimes it can be hard to see. Energy is all around us. The foundation of who we are. Energy lifts people up. Energy drives communities forward. Our past built with energy. Our future defined by it. As we solve one of the greatest challenges of our time, making energy more affordable and more reliable while driving climate progress. Natural gas and oil are elemental to our success our families, our communities. Because progress is happening here, and here, and here. And it's made in America. America's natural gas and oil. Progress is made in America. Welcome. Here we are in January 2022, the dawn of a new year. COVID has no doubt impacted the lives of thousands of people tuning in today. And in this challenging moment in which we find ourselves, we're also reminded of America's strength, its innovation, and its resilience shining through. It's a resilience that extends to industries like ours and skilled workforces like ours that make and move the energy that powers and protects modern life. I'm Megan Bloomgren, Senior Vice President at the American Petroleum Institute, and I wanna welcome each and every one of you to the 13th Annual State of American Energy. I'm proud to represent a strong industry whose workforce is counted in the millions, but whose focus is local. Day in and day out, America's energy workforce is ever evolving it's dynamic, and it's committed to safely providing reliable energy, reducing our emissions, and strengthening the communities where we live and work. It's our dedicated workforce that is helping to make the nation's recovery and a brighter future possible. Consider these facts on resilience. Before the pandemic hit nearly two years ago, the U.S. was the world's leading producer of oil and natural gas. The U.S. had just become a net exporter of crude and petroleum products for the first time in 70 years. Hydraulic fracturing and horizontal drilling, pioneered in America, had allowed entrepreneurs to access U.S. natural gas and oil from shale that was the envy of the world. Then in the early months of COVID, global demand for oil went from 100 million barrels per day down to 80 million as the market adjusted to extreme conditions. 80 million barrels is a significant amount used every day worldwide, especially in the midst of shutdowns, grounded flights, quarantining, and remote learning and working. All the while, our companies and employees responded, retrofitting facilities, increasing production of health and hygiene products, and donating critical medical supplies to combat the pandemic all across America. Here at home, Oil producers who had delivered a record of nearly 13 million barrels per day pre-pandemic in places like North Dakota, New Mexico, Texas, and other basins, as well as off America's shores, they dropped to producing fewer than 10 million barrels at the height of the pandemic. Fast forward to today. Global energy demand is recovering faster than global and American supply, due in part to federal policies but U.S. crude production stood tall at 11.7 million barrels per day produced last month and is climbing. In fact, output in the Permian Basin in Texas and New Mexico just hit a record 5 million barrels produced each day last month. Our industry continues to be integral to meeting worldwide demand because progress is made in America. Of course, this resilience was on display before the pandemic too. Over the last decade, more American natural gas replaced coal for electricity generation. And increased natural gas use has led to cleaner air and fewer carbon dioxide emissions. In fact, since 2000, the U.S. has led the world in reducing emissions. Meanwhile, on methane, 
average methane emissions intensity fell 60% over the last decade in the largest U.S. producing regions. Much of the world's work to address climate risk and to tackle climate change is underway and accelerating here at home. Progress is made in America. Similarly, U.S. energy is helping to alleviate global energy poverty, which is a critical goal of the Paris Climate Agreement. In 2000, just 79% of the Earth's population had access to electricity, and that grew to 90% in 2019. Continued progress in increasing energy access will come from access to U.S. natural gas. We're on the right track. Just last month, the U.S. overtook Australia and Qatar as the world's largest exporter of liquefied natural gas for the first time ever. Providing energy for light and heat for hospitals and modern conveniences, creating jobs and promoting economic growth, it's not a stretch to say the energy our industry manufactures every day is doing more to help the human condition than ever before. Progress is made in America. But as we know from the last two years, progress should never be taken for granted. And that's why today's 2022 State of American Energy will illustrate exactly what's at stake for family budgets in the U.S. economy, for our national security and climate progress globally. API President and CEO Mike Summers will hit on all this with analysis, industry actions and initiatives, and policy priorities in his remarks and a question and answer session later this hour. Before that, you'll hear from API Executive Vice President Amanda Eversole. She'll shine a light where progress is rightly attributed. But this isn't just about us. We're listening. We want to hear from you. Stay tuned for how you can engage throughout our dynamic program today and in the weeks to come. We look forward to your questions and to hearing from you. Thanks for joining us for the 2022 State of American Energy. I'm Amanda Eversole, Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer at API. As you've heard, our member companies are committed to providing safe, affordable, reliable, and sustainable energy well into the future. And during this state of American energy, you'll see that our industry is taking big steps to attract the best and brightest problem solvers to tackle tomorrow's energy challenges. We are fortunate to be building on a solid foundation, a workforce that is already leading in addressing the risks posed by a changing climate. Consider just a few of the cutting edge technologies our industry is developing right now. Today, America leads the world in carbon capture utilization and storage technology, or CCUS as it's known, based on strategies developed in our industry and by our scientists, engineers, geologists, and problem solvers. In fact, U.S. commercial scale facilities have the capacity to capture more than 20 million metric tons of CO2 annually, equivalent to the electricity used by 3.6 million homes over the course of the year. Experts say that amount of carbon sequestration will more than double by decade's end. And that's not all. We're providing cleaner transportation fuels and helping reduce emissions in power generation. We're making advancements in water recycling, flare management, and creating a smaller footprint in our operations because we care about conserving our land, waters, and resources too. Meanwhile, last October, we rolled out guidelines to adopt 3D printing in production. This innovation brings critical manufacturing closer to the point of use and reduces stress in the supply chain while cutting emissions and maximizing efficiencies. In the past three years alone, API published nearly 60 standards that directly help reduce emissions, flarings and leaks during production, refining and energy transportation, all of which help address climate risks 
and shape a lower carbon future. These new standards and technological improvements are developed by natural gas and oil workers through their own real world field experience. It's a self-starting data crunching culture and it is in our DNA to wake up and wonder how to do it even better. Our workers have a deep sense of personal ownership. What they do strengthens their families, their communities, and their nation. This is an industry of opportunity, and we strive to ensure that that opportunity is afforded to all Americans. Diversity makes us better. We're working hard to demonstrate it in our workforce, in our partnerships, and in our supply chains. But don't take my word for it. During a recent trip to Houston, Texas, I met five extraordinary industry professionals. They all shared a clear-eyed vision about providing the world with a reliable energy source while taking major steps to safeguard their communities and the environment. I think you'll appreciate meeting these dynamic, emerging industry leaders and learning how their work brings progress to their communities, America, and the world. Enjoy. A petrophysicist is trying to find the physical properties of the rock and how we can get the hydrocarbon out of it. I'm Essie Kwabi, and I am a petrophysicist. I get to bring electricity and clean natural gas to other people around the world, which they wouldn't have that otherwise. My name is Jovan Segura. I'm in charge of overseeing operations for our drill bit product line, making sure that we have capabilities across the globe to be able to repair our drill bits that are out in the field and come back for assessment and uh, improvement and repair. America is a leader in producing reliable, affordable energy. But we must safely deliver natural gas and oil across the country and the world with fewer emissions. We do so with the help of people like Jenna in Valdez, Alaska. My position is the conduit between state and federal compliance or regulations and ensuring that we are in compliance with those. We're here on Valdez at Valdez Marine Terminal. We're constantly complying with the regulations. We're gonna follow this regulation, but we're gonna go above and beyond that and um, really make it safe for people to do their job. Our incident management team here at Alaska, I feel like is the best in the world. My job is essentially reviewing data and evaluating technology and innovations to try to prove our operational efficiency and really lower our environmental impacts. We're now able to implement machine learning, plug all these, all these data points in and get actual results back from it and it's it can sift through data so much faster than human can and get real world results and it's it's really unfathomable and it's really revolutionary i think american-made energy powers our lives and for that to happen without interruption we depend on systems and people working together to develop refine and deliver the energy the world needs from atlanta georgia to midland texas our industry's work is never done just take Finley, Ohio, for example. The product is then tanked out, done different product quality testing to ensure that it is on spec before getting to the customers. At the load rack, the terminals are basically where the transports come and fill up with fuel before they go to convenience stores or asphalt mix plants, things like that before they make it to the customers. We take the oil and we're constantly monitoring that to ensure it's safe transport onto the tankers. And how do I make that happen personally is having pride in my job and showing my children that the importance of keeping their state safe and their community safe is very important to me. There's a lot of unknowns that now we know. Because of the improvements in technology, now we have sensors that can you know, withstand the temperatures and the forces that are happening at the bottom of the drill stream. That wasn't able to happen 10 years ago. Having an impact on my local area, this is basically my backyard, um, looking into the environmental impacts we have on it, what I can do to make it cleaner. My mission as a petrophysicist is to be able to bring natural gas and oil to people that need it. The millions of men and women working in natural gas and oil are pushing new boundaries, making constant improvements, and ensuring a better, brighter future for all. Because progress happens, when we all come together. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today in Houston to talk about 
the natural gas and oil industry. And why don't we just jump right in? So I think if I asked you all to, to talk about the imagery that you think of when you think of natural gas and oil and the innovation that's going on right now, um, and then what you think of in the next decade. Can you talk to me a little bit about how you see it in your day-to-day -day job and, and then how you see your company changing and evolving? I see it as a puzzle, so trying to solve a puzzle. Every piece is important. And when you look at the big picture, it all comes together. So we are all important, the petrophysicists, the geologists, the uh, engineer, the, the geophysicist, all of us bring the story together. I've been at my company for 17 years and where we've been and where we are today is just so incredibly uh, different. Now we literally have data in our hands every second um, through technology advancements and, and being able to then make data-driven decisions based on what is readily available. I am very excited to see what the next 10 years holds. The speed at which we get data now is just amazing. And not only on the logging side, but also on the coring side, uh, the, la the labs have been coming up with innovative ways of making the uh, answers that we're looking for. I've recently been very impressed around the digitization efforts that our industry has really invested in. And to your point on having that information available, right, and uh, the technology that we're able to leverage today, a lot of us don't realize that it's possible. We're doing it today. Very exciting being able to solve problems tomorrow that we haven't been able to solve before because of these investments. One of the great pleasures of my job is getting to meet people like you and getting to hear stories of how this industry has really impacted lives. So this industry is completely revolutionized where I, where I live. Everything I do in life, I, I try to do for my community and make my community a better place and teaching people in my local community about what we do as the oil and gas industry, how we do it, how we help protect the environment. And our industry gives back more than any industry in the country, I think. We, we are very involved, very active in the communities in which we work and prosper. And, and that's what really drove me to oil and gas, and that's why I, I love doing what I do. Our industry regularly is supporting STEM programs at local schools to not only promote right what oil and gas is about, but also to encourage women and kids and you know everybody, right, all ethnicities, to participate, and this is what our industry can provide, and we we have to feed right the system. Clearly, diversity, equity, and inclusion is a very important topic, but I've also noticed that it is really part of the culture of this industry and in giving opportunity and rewarding hard work. So, you know, any 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 thoughts on that? I've worked for the oil and gas industry for 15 years now. And the white male perception is an old perception. And I feel like diversity is in the forefront of our minds. And the company that I work for, I would say 30 to 40% are supervisors, managers, and directors. And that gives me inspiration, you know, knowing that I could potentially be that someday. And that's really neat. What I would say with for people who think it's a white dominated industry, I would say then we need you, you know, come and be the diversity <laughs> at the workplace and we can always improve. So that would be my call to somebody who would, who, who is thinking that that was the case, that, you know, join us, join me <laughs> and be the, the difference. and. Uh, the industry is very passionate about it. They're looking for people like us. I have to tell you, talking to you guys is just incredibly motivating to me because not only is the energy in the room here, but the ability to tackle problems that are tough, ranging from how you extract resources from a mile underneath the Earth's crust to tackling some really tough societal challenges. Do you feel like sometimes there's a kind of default perspective when you have conversations where people may have some um, misconceptions about what, what, what you do? I think most, you talk about oil and gas and that's what comes to people's mind, oil coming out of the ground. What we do helps society run, but even beyond transportation or, or just electricity, right, is, is the materials, right, that our industry also partake, participates in mm -hmm 
in acquiring for everything else that we see, right? All the gadgets and what, you know, gadgets that uh, we buy and use, right? Yeah. You know, glasses you're wearing. Our, our clothes. From all the, <laughs> our clothes, right? Cell phone, you and know, it's, everything. It's the plastics, it's the makeup, it's all of these things. It's such a bigger picture in our everyday lives. Just in general, we tend to shut down things we don't understand. So it, it's all about awareness, it's all about showing the value that we provide and educating people uh, as to what it is that, how the industry impacts them on a daily basis. I also think um, communication and trust from the community mm -hmm. and stakeholders and regulators and them knowing that we're always, you know, um, safety and the environment is in the forefront of our mind, always, that's number one. I think that's super important um, is to gain the trust of the community as well because they are the stakeholders and regulators. So trust is really important in that. And I think that part of establishing trust is building a relationship and really uh, having people understand how we think about optimizing and improving. The, the notion of continual improvement within our industry is part of our DNA. It's who we are and what we do. We're maintaining global energy supply with only a third of the resources that we were using eight years ago. People don't realize that, right? But it's a big impact. Big changes, big improvements have been made. We're in an industry that is used to these challenges and have the right people to solve the problems when we have our backs against the wall to come out ahead, right? And, and that's what we do. Really, we've got a lot of smart, innovative people that are in our industry at all levels that are coming up with new ways to uh, detect vapors, new ways to reduce emissions on their own, not because someone told them that they needed to, but they can see how what they do ties to their daily lives. We are being innovative because we want to be sustainable, because it's gonna maintain the industry as a whole. If you don't innovate, if you don't keep up with technology, you don't get better. It's just the nature of the game. You have to adapt, you have to meet the needs of the changing world, and you have to um, stay on top of your game. I really think the sky is the limit. Our industry is so proactive in everything we do whether it be how can we get more gas, how can we improve the environment. We have, we have a lot of great minds and a lot of great people coming together to form ideas, try, try things, maybe bring in technology from other industries. We have to put meaning or purpose behind anything we do. I think it gives you that, uh, that motivation to keep going. Mm -hmm. And that, re that reason could be as simple as your family, providing for your family. Or it could be a as big as solving the global energy problem. Over here, we take it for granted. We have the light, if the, the lights are on all the time and we are happy. And the moment that the lights go goes off, we want to see somebody, right? So, but back home, it's a norm to see the light go off for hours and not know when it's going to come back on. And so little things like this means a lot to some people around the world. I like what Essie said about um, people taking the energy piece for granted. I know in the state of Alaska, you know, up north in the villages where it's 50 below in the winter time, they have to have that energy to survive. Mm -hmm. And that's super important. Absolutely. I love working for the natural gas and oil industry because we make general daily life sustainable. The future of natural gas and oil to me looks like an evolution of innovation. We're going to bring diversity of thought, diversity of background, new perspectives, and I think that's only gonna drive us even further to come up with new ways um, to produce the energy, um, new technologies, um, new cost savings measures, new safety protocols, and so I'm excited for the future. Well guys, this was an incredible conversation. It is such a pleasure to have a chance to visit with you today and help tell the story of the important work that you and your teams are leading each and every day on behalf of the people of this country to have the energy in order to power our daily lives. So thank you so much for your time.
what does progress look like in action? It looks like this, and this, and this. 11 million men and women supporting America's natural gas and oil industry. Working. Innovating. Taking action. Of better ways to deliver energy. Helping the U.S. lead on climate action. Accelerating technology. Further mitigating emissions. And developing cleaner fuels. Progress doesn't stop, and neither does America's natural gas and oil for families, businesses, and communities making a better tomorrow, today. Because progress is made in America. Today, I have the honor of speaking about the state of American energy as API and our nearly 600 member companies embark on the new year. And for all the challenges we can expect, I couldn't be more confident in our industry, the progress we enable, and America's position in leading the world on energy and climate in 2022. People count on us for reliable energy, good jobs, and millions of products made with natural gas and oil every day. We are proud of that and our industry's leading role in delivering solutions that are building a lower carbon future. In fact, American energy is produced to environmental and safety standards that are among the highest in the world. This enables America to lead the world in accelerating safety and sustainability. The work we do is crucial, essential, and consequential. Our country continues to grapple with uncertainty, a pandemic, a short-term crisis in the supply chain, and a quest to spur growth without accelerating inflation. But here's one thing we know for sure. The path to American prosperity, security, and progress must include American natural gas and oil. We are an industry of engineers, entrepreneurs, skilled craft workers, and problem solvers with decades of ingenuity and investment that strengthen America. API members have taken the U.S. from chronic dependence on foreign energy to a net exporter of energy for the first time in nearly seven decades, and in the process, made America stronger and safer. We've narrowed the trade deficit. We've revived entire communities and regional economies. We've given the world cleaner fuels. We offer practical climate solutions to policymakers on both sides of the aisle. And the natural gas we produce has made America the world's leader in reducing carbon dioxide emissions. Here's the key point. When a country becomes the leading producer of oil and natural gas and has reduced carbon dioxide emissions from electricity generation by 40% in 15 years, it is clearly doing many things right. These are hard-won gains. Our mission at API is to build on this progress. In so many ways, the state of American energy is strong. Our nation has the resources and expertise it takes to meet our energy needs, support millions of jobs, continue to address the risks of climate change, and keep America free from the dangers of dependence on unreliable foreign sources. Even so, we begin 2022 with Americans viewing energy and its costs as major concerns. This is in part because lately, we've seen policies aimed at restricting production and delivery of U.S. natural gas and oil. First, a pipeline bringing oil from Canada to the United States was quickly canceled, along with good paying union jobs. Other energy pipeline projects face long-term delays. And as we've seen challenges in Michigan to existing critical infrastructure, like Line 5, that would put an entire region and its energy supply at risk. New leasing for energy development on federal acreage was stopped for many months. Meanwhile, with inflation soaring to historic levels, we've seen proposals in Congress for a targeted tax increase on natural gas and even further restrictions on American energy development. 
These decisions exacerbate Americans' concerns and put upward pressure on their energy prices. Lawmakers should avoid such policies, which don't put America on a path to progress, nor help us meet basic energy needs. When policy signals prevent energy leadership here at home, there are going to be consequences. U.S. policies that restrict domestic production force our country to seek relief from OPEC, undermining our energy independence. America should not be in the position of asking for foreign energy supplies, especially when we have abundant resources produced to standards that are among the highest in the world right here at home. Instead, we should be leading as the world's top producer of natural gas and oil. It's when things get rough in energy markets, when Americans have felt the turbulence of instability in places like California, Texas, or New England, that we can see energy as the bipartisan priority it should be. At API, we advocate in that spirit every single day. Nothing is more essential to economic growth than reliable, affordable, and abundant energy. To lose that advantage is not in anyone's best interest. And so, we make our case to everyone, working with both political parties in Congress and across all 50 states. In policy debates this year, it's possible we'll find more agreement than usual, if only because American energy leadership itself solves so many problems our nation faces. Energy is an input for practically everything else in the economy. With supply chain failures and with inflation on the minds of many Americans, the last thing anyone wants to see is more upward pressure on costs that are felt by every family and business. We need not look further than the situation in Europe to see what happens when nations depend on energy production from suppliers that have agendas of their own. Take the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. It sounds like a good idea for European economies to depend on regional energy suppliers. That is so long as you forget who's on the other end of that pipeline. The problem is that when certain foreign governments control your energy, they have the power to use it for their own purposes, not yours. We don't want to learn that lesson the hard way. Against this backdrop, here in our country, we reject efforts to scale back domestic production and prevent new infrastructure to deliver energy to families and industries. So the question will become more urgent. As a country, do we really want to stay on the path of restricting production, denying permits, closing off access, and returning to the days of dependence on foreign sources? This is short-sighted energy policy, and we must consider those it's impacting. The real-world choices start with demand. Make no mistake, it's going to increase as populations grow and as more countries work to escape energy poverty. As new energy sources come online and are brought up to scale, natural gas and oil will be critical. And of course, some alternative sources, like solar and wind, are intermittent. They need natural gas as a backup. No matter how quickly we incorporate more renewable sources of energy, natural gas will be critical to a reliable energy grid. In discussions like these, we hear a lot about the energy transition. Here's the truth. This industry is ever-evolving and transitioning through incorporation of new technology, cleaner fuels, and new systems to deliver energy with fewer emissions and a smaller footprint. We share with global leaders the goal and urgency of reduced emissions across the broader economy, and specifically those from energy production, transportation, and use by society. Our industry brings the scale and expertise to make lower carbon future a reality. This is about addition, not subtraction. America needs all the reliable and affordable lower carbon energy we can get. And we're working to bring carbon capture to commercial scale so that Americans can more quickly achieve its emission reductions targets. This industry is making it happen. One of America's strengths is how it has repeatedly shown the way in technology and environmental progress. Time and again, 
we've illustrated that some major breakthroughs come not by forced regulations and mandates, but through innovation and technology. In this job, I spend a fair amount of time on the road, seeing the work of our member companies and suppliers, and meeting people involved in every aspect of production, delivery, and refining. And what always amazes me is that whatever the problem, however complex, our workers are personally invested in solutions. Among the millions of men and women who make up our diverse workforce and supplier network, you find the same drive to advance, to improve, to solve, and to educate the next generation. I have the honor to meet the people of that caliber all the time. Take Sue Gumbel. She completed a two-year program at Lackawanna College in Northeast Pennsylvania, and now she's the program director at the college's new school of petroleum and natural gas. Her students receive free access to API's world-class engineering and operations standards that support safety and sustainability in the field. Together with Sue, we are arming future problem solvers with relevant industry knowledge to jumpstart their energy careers. Let's hear from Sue right now. Thanks for having me here today. The industry has been wonderful to our program here at the school, um, donating whatever is needed, um, like API donated, um, and give us full access to all their um, operational standards to use in our curriculum. And we have implemented it in the curriculum in numerous um, classes, um, which is very helpful. And we all work together um, to make sure that everyone works safely, not only you know to keep everyone safe, but also the environment, the environment safe. Um, so uh, that's that's what's great about um, this program, the industry being here. Nothing, nothing. We would have nothing like this in the area if it wasn't for the oil and gas industry. They have actually made dreams come true for a lot of people around here, and I'm just blessed to be a part of it. The work at Lackawanna College gives just a glimpse of the constant flow of ideas and new applications that are shaping today's natural gas and oil industry. And because what we do is so fundamental to the whole economy, so basic to modern life, one good idea can go a long way. Even a simple innovation can be high impact and far reaching. This is true above all of ideas that apply industry expertise to environmental challenges. Responsible environmental practice is a shared value in this country and in our industry. It is what Americans expect, and it's what we expect of ourselves. And we do more than support key environmental objectives. In many cases, such as carbon capture, we've created and are providing the very technologies that make progress possible. In fact, at its core, API is a standard-setting organization, codifying the engineering practices for every aspect of operations from safety to sustainability to environmental protection. And our members are constantly raising the bar, setting and updating those standards through a collaborative process with the best and brightest minds from federal agencies, academia, citizens groups, and more. In 2021, API issued 77 published standards and announced API Energy Excellence, which unifies safety and environmental practices industry-wide. And we set forth our climate action framework with five basic goals. To strengthen emissions reductions in our industry and across the economy, to speed up development of cleaner fuels, to drive climate reporting to provide consistency and transparency, to support economy-wide carbon pricing mechanisms, and to deploy lower carbon technologies at commercial scale, all while continuing to meet growing energy demand. API is also partnering with government agencies and across industries to reduce emissions. We support the direct regulation of methane from new and existing sources and are sharing industry knowledge and experience to inform EPA's forthcoming rulemaking. We engage and collaborate with federal agencies to protect the nation's pipelines and other critical energy infrastructure from cyber attacks, and we've helped accelerate progress 
through collaboration with the auto industry on advanced vehicle technologies and cleaner fuels. New cars, trucks, SUVs, and buses run 99% cleaner for most tailpipe emissions than models produced in 1970. They also emit less CO2, even as vehicle miles traveled per year have increased threefold. The thinking is this. On their own, so many companies and their engineers have achieved incredible things. Working together and in partnership with other sectors, pursuing common objectives, and sharing data and information, companies in our industry can meet climate goals at an even greater pace. And we aren't going to wait for Congress to act on climate. We're already taking action. Indeed, America has accepted the responsibility to lead on climate. Our industry views that responsibility as an opportunity. For us, that means fresh perspectives, bipartisan solutions, public-private partnerships, and showing the best and the brightest of the natural gas and oil industry. Good stewardship and motivated talent make a powerful combination. Here again, we see a rising generation of problem solvers. One of them is Heidi Gill, the founder and CEO of Urban Solution Group in Denver. Her firm has been a great partner to API members. Here's Heidi to tell you how. Hi, Mike. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. My name is Heidi Gill. I'm the founder and CEO of Urban Solution Group. We are a Denver-based oil field service company that focuses on mitigating nuisance impacts to nearby communities. And it's so exciting because at Urban, we believe in this next generation of oil and gas development that not only takes care of the environment in the way that our industry does, but it also takes into account the social and political aspects that our industry is faced with. So in this new regulatory environment and political environment, operators are really stepping up to help invest in companies like mine that are striving to solve these regulatory and environmental challenges. And I think that we're excited to be here because the team has worked extremely hard, but we're even more excited to be a part of this next generation of oil and gas development that is helping mitigate uh, impacts to communities. And it is taking environmental protection to the next level. And it is helping have uh, social awareness and social compatibility with oil and gas development near humans. So it's exciting to see our dreams come to fruition and it wouldn't be possible if operators weren't choosing to work with us because of this vision and what we are offering. So we're really excited to be here. We're really excited to be partnering with API on this and just greatly appreciate the opportunity. Heidi's work reminds us that oil and natural gas are more than strategic national and geopolitical assets. For many communities, they comprise a local economic success story that's making all the difference. And as API advocates for responsible energy development, millions of men and women in those communities rightly feel that we're speaking up for them too. Over the past decade, through innovation and ingenuity, our industry has unleashed an American energy revolution and enabled the United States to improve prosperity. That impact is often felt where it's needed the most. In energy producing areas from Pennsylvania to New Mexico, our industry has helped turn around entire communities and changed lives for the better. Men and women finding new opportunities in their hometowns, businesses starting up, property values rising, and tax revenues too. It's a story you see repeated in one region after another. It adds up to more than 11 million good jobs supported by this industry. For a snapshot of this dynamic, you could look most anywhere. Every time a new energy producing operation takes off, a whole network springs up to supply parts, materials, equipment, transportation, and services. The cycle of opportunity reaches far, as anyone involved can testify. Here's one oil field supplier, Chance Chase, describing what it means for him, his 40 employees, and his home state of New Mexico. Hey, Mike. Hey, thanks for your time today. I'm Chance Chase of the Mac Energy Corporation out in Southeast New Mexico. And, you know, oil and gas is a big part of my life. I'm a third generation uh, family in oil and gas. 
And we are constantly growing. We're constantly improving. And the biggest thing I've seen growing up in New Mexico is not only are we growing our businesses, but we're helping grow communities. Our communities are growing not only in technology, but in healthcare and education, along with just infrastructure in itself. Oil and gas has helped fund new roads so we can go to better hospitals or bring in better doctors, better quality of life for everybody. Um, and not only that, but it also helped raise new entrepreneurs that put together foundations that help give back to the community because these community communities really help raise them. Um, and with that, education has grown. You've seen new buildings pop up, new sports brought in. And it's very important to me that as a father now, that my kids know where that comes from and how we help power America and how they can also improve where we are now today. So again, thanks again for your time and we'll talk to you soon. Chance is one of many thousands who can tell their version of the same good story. The consistent unmistakable theme is American energy leadership and progress. It's a reminder that for all of our challenges, there isn't a country on earth that wouldn't want to have our advantages and be in our position. Worldwide, as the need for energy continues to grow, so will the commitment of nations like ours to a lower carbon future. Suppose that by 2040, every signatory to the Paris Climate Agreement was to meet their commitments. Even then, government experts say natural gas and oil will still account for almost half of all energy used. It's gotta come from somewhere. And it ought to be from the United States of America, where we have vast reserves, a highly skilled workforce, stringent environmental rules, and strong industry standards. Meeting the world's growing need for energy while building a lower carbon future is the opportunity of our time. Governments, industries, and consumers must rise to seize it together. Today, in this same problem-solving spirit, I issue a call to action to the President, Congress, and lawmakers in all 50 states. First, work together on implementing policies that address the challenge of climate change through public-private partnerships, incorporating innovation, and lending scale and expertise of our industry and others. Together, we can meet the goals of a lower carbon future. A good place to start is with our forward-looking Climate Action Framework, which you can read at api.org slash climate. Second, prioritize advancing American energy leadership with policies that encourage development of responsibly produced energy here at home. These policies should recognize the volatile world we live in and the long-term impacts of returning to the days of foreign energy dependency. Third, and finally, craft regulatory policies that increase certainty, unleash private investment, and build on and incorporate technological progress well underway, particularly on methane emissions reductions. Regulations have an important role to play in sustaining American leadership and shaping a lower carbon future. Ours is an industry that welcomes partnership and collaboration and is problem solving at its core. As you've seen today, our industry is filled with the exact kind of people needed to solve the greatest scientific challenges of our time. Engineers, geologists, scientists, and researchers, we all share this same goal and are neck deep in solving these challenges. Together, let's lead the future with progress made here in America. Thank you.
Isaac. Hi, Amy. Great speech today, and Thanks thank so you much. for the insight into the future of American energy. Thanks for making time for me to be here today. Of course, and you're pretty new to API. I am brand new. <laughs> Not quite brand new. <laughs> well, we're sorry to make you uh, the news anchor of SOAE this oh, well, year. I'm happy to be here. However, I'm not used to being in front of the camera. I'm much better suited behind camera, roaming the halls of Congress, and that, that's where I'm more comfortable. Right, you actually worked for Congressman Henry Cuellar of Texas. As I did, I did. Great energy producing state and energy champion. Um, now, my experience with Henry Cuellar has given me the opportunity to ask very tough questions, which I'm going to now turn to you. <laughs> we, um, I know the audience is very excited to have your perspective on um, some great questions that they've submitted and they have been rolling in. So if you're ready to go, I'll I'm dive ready. right in. <laughs> well, this time last year, you gave us an outlook of how API and the industry was looking to engage with the incoming Biden administration. We're now one year in, it's officially 2022. How are things going? Well, I think, first of all, uh, one of the most important things we did in 2021 was roll out the API Climate Action Framework. Uh, this was the industry's perspective on how to address the key challenge of climate change uh, in 2021 and beyond. Uh, I'm excited to report that we've made great progress on the climate framework, and it also gave us a way to talk to this administration about one of their top priorities. Uh, and uh, we're excited that uh, they uh, have looked at the framework, uh, they've engaged us on the framework, and we're hopeful that going into 2022, we can continue to talk to them about the important priorities that we laid out in the framework. One example of progress that we've made, however, is the bipartisan infrastructure bill actually put uh, in place uh, historic investments into carbon capture, which is one of the key planks of the, of the framework that we put in place last year. Well, since joining API, I know there was a member of the White House who actually showed up to headquarters with the climate action That's frame exactly in right. hand, so you're making great progress in that front. Um, shifting from the White House to Capitol Hill, which you're very familiar with, what do you anticipate is coming out of Congress in the next couple months? Well, uh, as you know, they didn't quite get their homework done at the end of last year, <laughs> and uh, they have a lot of work to do on the president's Build Back Better plan. Uh, so I know that that's going to be a top focus in the first quarter of this year. Uh, you know, we have some major concerns about the plan that uh, uh, came out of the United States House of Representatives, particularly a new tax on natural gas. Uh, as I think all the viewers know, uh, natural gas prices are going up because we're in the middle of a cold winter uh, and there are, have been restrictions on supply that have, uh, have come as a consequence of some of the policy decisions that have been made by this administration. So we're focused on reversing those policy decisions, but at the same time, we have to stop this natural gas tax because that would just mean higher prices for American consumers. So. Uh, I know the, the administration and the Congress are also going to be focused on how do you fund the government before February 18th, uh, but uh, the, the focus after that is done is going to be on the Build Back Better plan. Well, it looks like we'll have our work cut out for us once they get their homework done, <laughs> assuming they get it done. Um, you've touched on some of the opportunities and challenges dealing with the administration and Congress as it relates to climate change. We've often heard you say that climate change is one of the greatest challenges of our time. How do you see the industry making progress in that space? And what are some of the ways in which the industry is making meaningful energy transition? So first of all, let's put that challenge in perspective. We know that world population is probably going to increase by 2050 by 2 billion people to almost 10 billion people throughout the world. Second of all, we know that energy demand, energy use is only going to increase. In fact, uh, some experts predict that energy demand is going to go up by 50% by 2050. So the challenge that we have is how do we continue to meet that demand, which is going to grow because of population growth and because people are going to be using and demanding more energy, while at the same time, you continue to reduce emissions and address the risks of climate change. So that's really the challenge that uh, we have to pursue. One of the ways that this industry is focused on addressing that challenge is through investments in carbon capture technology. We've talked about it before, I talked about it in my speech, about how we need to continue to invest in those technologies because we believe that it is the way uh, that we're going to uh, really address this challenge from an industry perspective. This is an industry that has actually pioneered uh, this technology uh, and we're continuing to make investments in it 
every single year. Uh, we were pleased that the bipartisan infrastructure bill, for example, uh, made historic investments into uh, carbon capture. Uh, and we're excited that we'll have the opportunity to partner with governments, with outside experts, and our industry uh, to continue to address this challenge on a commercial scale. Well, that's exciting to hear and exciting to see what's in the future. Obviously, a question that you're probably not surprised to get is about COVID-19. We are seeing many iterations of pandemic life. As we are looking to get out of this pandemic and have post-pandemic life, how do you see U.S. energy on the global stage? Yeah, so obviously the pandemic uh, was, a, was a real shock to the system, not just for the energy industry, but for almost every industry in the world. Um, just from a global perspective, if you think about, for example, what energy demand, what oil demand in particular, what happened to it as a consequence of the pandemic. You know, on any average day, the world usually consumes about 100 million barrels of oil every single day. Uh, and in a two month period, we went down from 100 million barrels a day of use to about 80 million barrels of use. Uh, we're slowly creeping back up to that 100 million barrel use a day. Uh, as people start to go back to work and back to school. Uh, but we're going to have to continue to produce more to meet those growing demands uh, that the American people and the world are, are going to have to continue their growth to prosperity. So uh, it was a huge shock, but uh, we're excited about the opportunities that we have to uh, continue to produce energy in an environmentally responsible way and lead the world uh, again uh, as the world's uh, largest producer of oil and natural gas. Well, it's winter and my traffic hasn't slowed down any, so demand is clearly, <laughs> clearly up. Um, I'll give you one last question and it's one that's popular amongst our viewers and it's getting your perspective on the topic of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Our viewers really wanna hear what the industry is doing and what API is doing to make progress in that space. This is a top tier priority for uh, API and our member companies. We know that uh, the future of the workforce is going to be more diverse. We also know from uh, publicly available studies that a, a diverse workforce performs better than one that uh, is just a, a certain segment of the population. So we need to continue to grow a diverse workforce. Uh, there are a couple of different ways we can do it. Uh, within the industry itself, uh, we can focus on it. We also have to focus on it from our suppliers that supply our great industry. And then third, we also have to focus on the future. We have initiatives in all of those areas, and I want to highlight a couple of those. First of all, on the supplier side, we have an initiative now at API where we're working with our member companies to make sure that that supplier, supply chain and the suppliers to this industry are, are, are from diverse communities. And we're excited uh, about the work that we've done in this space, and it's going to continue to grow. And then uh, on the future, uh, we're trying to make sure that we have access to uh, diverse populations uh, that are going to be the future of our workforce. And one of the things that we're doing is we're taking our world-class standards and we're sharing them, we're giving them for free uh, to minority-serving institutions in the United States so that students that are in engineering and geology programs uh, and computer science programs already have access to those before they even graduate from university. Uh, we launched this program in 2021 at Southern University in one of the energy capitals of the United States, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We've since given those standards to Grambling uh, and to uh, Prairie View A&M in, in Houston. Uh, and what we're confident of is that as students uh, have access to these standards, they're going to be ready on day one. Uh, when they join the uh, great oil and gas industry in the United States. And it's a, it's a good thing for us because they'll know what they need to do on day one. And it's a great thing for these institutions to give these kids a leg up before they even come into the workforce. Well, Mike, thank you so much for making time to sit down with me and answer some great questions and really get into the weeds of the future of American energy. It's been great. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Mike. And to our viewers, thank you so much for engaging with API and thank you for sending some very great thought-provoking questions. We hope that you continue this conversation online by using the hashtag SOAE2022. Thank you, until next time. Thanks, everybody.